Today we're going to build an outdoor sofa. I designed this project so it could be built with just three power tools and a few accessories. We're going to start by using the circular saw and speed square to cut the wood to length. All of the wood pieces for this sofa are made out of 2x6s. I'll post drawings with all of the dimensions on my website. I use this circular saw to make all the cuts and when I'm making right angle cuts like this, I just like to use a speed square to guide the blade. I need a 3 inch wide piece for the front of the sofa, so I'm going to clamp down another 2x6 as a guide and then rip this 2x6 into two pieces. Now that 3 inch piece is going to be used for the front, but I'm going to use the leftover piece to make supports for the underside of the seat. I used an orbital sander to sand all the pieces and I sanded them to 150 grit. To make the side panels for the sofa, I want to join three of the 2x6 pieces together. To do this, I'm going to use a doweling jig that I got from Home Depot. It comes with a drill bit that has a collar that you can adjust. I set it so that it would drill just about half of the length of the wood plugs. I drilled three holes in the first piece, inserted these little metal markers, and then pressed one piece against the other to transfer the mark on the holes perfectly. I really like this doweling jig. It's affordable, doesn't take up much room, and it adds functionality to one of the most common power tools. I then applied some Gorilla wood glue and glued up these panels. I was careful not to apply too much glue. I don't want it oozing out the cracks because that would create extra sanding work. I used a couple of my Maker Brand F-Style clamps to clamp the panels together. I assembled the second panel, same as the first. I assembled the seat for the sofa upside down. I'm screwing from the bottom so that none of the screw heads will show. I'm using two and a half inch long screws and I'm being careful not to overdrive them too much so that they come out the other end. Next I'm screwing on the front piece of the sofa. Now this would be a lot easier if I didn't care about hiding the screw heads, so I had to add these extra pieces so that I could screw in from the back. I used three and one eighth inch long finish screws to attach the side panels. And now a word from our sponsor for this video, Reolink. Reolink makes security cameras that are great for your home or business. They sent me the Argus 2 camera and a solar panel that can plug right into it. I've tried quite a few different security camera systems, but this one is by far the easiest to set up. The camera is 100% wire-free, flexible, and portable, so you can place it anywhere. To install it, you just screw on this mounting plate, and then the camera sticks on and can be adjusted with magnets. You can pull the camera off, plug it in to charge it, or mount a solar panel right next to it and use that to charge the battery. Finally, a smart security camera that's easy to install and you don't need an electrician to do so. To learn more about Reolink, Click on the link in the description box below. Okay, back to the build. Having the back rest for the sofa at a slight angle will increase its comfort. So I cut a 20 inch long piece of two by six, drew a line corner to corner, and then ripped it into two pieces with my circular saw. I then placed a one and a half inch thick piece of wood underneath it, and then drew a line even with the edge of the side panels. This line tells me how much I need to trim off. I then used the angle on this piece of wood to set the angle on my circular saw blade. I then ripped an angle piece that will be used at the top of the backrest. I screwed the backrest supports to the side panels and then screwed on the 2x6s that will create the backrest. Now I am using premium kiln dried cedar 2x6s, which are really nice, but any 2x6 will work for this project. Just try to go through and pick out the straightest and nicest ones. I used L brackets to fasten the top piece because again, I don't want the screw heads to show.
I flipped the sofa over and added some more short pieces of 2x6s that will give me a nice wide surface to attach the hairpin legs to. There are a lot of hairpin legs on the market, but they're not all created equal. I picked the ones from DIYHairpinLegs.com because they use three rods and they're really thick, which means they'll be strong enough for a sofa. I got these outdoor seat cushions from Home Depot and they have these cloth strings on them that allow you to tie them to a structure to keep them from blowing away. I drilled holes in the backrest that allow me to feed these strings through and tie the cushions to the frame. I did a little bit of touch up sanding with the orbital sander and then placed all the cushions. This design could easily be adjusted to accommodate cushions of any size and it would also look really good if you painted it or stained it. I'm using it out here in the desert where there isn't a lot of moisture, so I'll just wipe the legs down with a little bit of WD-40 and let the cedar stay natural. If you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.